the only way to come. In. So much party <laughs> skating here tonight. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fate's End, a homebrew Dungeons and Dragons game driven by fate. I will be your tail weaver for the evening. Uh, let's just get right into it. We don't have too many announcements this uh, this evening. Uh, but first of all, we do want to shout out Tabletop Audio at tabletopaudio.com for the ambience that we use in our show from time to time. That sound that you hear in the background right now, that music, that ambiance, that is coming from Tabletop Audio right this moment. Uh, you can go support Tim on Patreon. He also has a Patreon, and it all it's all free gaming music that you can use in your own tabletop games. Uh, we also want to shout out Nine Realms Gaming. They create top-notch gaming accessories from the finest woods that this realm has to offer. You can visit NineRealmsGaming.com and use our exclusive partner code LIAR10 to get 10% off your purchase. We also want to shout out the Shop of Many Things. Being a great dungeon master is hard, but the Shop of Many has you covered. They create magic pens, puzzles, and other tools to level up your sessions. You can visit the Shop of Many Things.com and use our code LIAR20 to get 20% off store wide. We also want to shout out Sirenscape for the ambient sounds and music and their online player that we use on stream from time to time. Ooh. Other than that, uh, you can follow us on social media with Command Socials and check out all Ink and Liar and all of our socials. You can also follow us all individually with Command Fate Cast. You can follow the individual members of our cast here on Fate's End. But yeah, short announcements this evening. Other than that, tonight Samson will be recapping the last episode of Fate's End. So with that's, that being said, let's draw our cards for tonight's episode Fate's End. Dear Samir, I hope this letter finds you well. We've booked passage on a ship captained by none other than Rue Thorn, and have discovered the smuggler is still up to his old tricks. The captain was transporting one of the Swindle Twins to a secret island to meet her brother and Tredelian Skyweaver, of all people. When we arrived, however, we had more company than we expected. Two ships were bombing the island, laying siege to the keep. One was gritty black sails. The other could have been a merchant ship for all I know. Fint sent the latter to Davy Jones' locker and we rushed to the former. And as as this whirlpool is approaching and the ship just begins to lurch and kind of turn and just <laughs> begins to move and circle within this whirlpool and like the sides of the sails begin to like lurch and dip some of it like hitting the water and it begins to move um it was just a skeleton crew aboard the black ship. We quickly interrogated those left behind and learned a fearsome bounty hunter, the Scorch Hunter, who was already on the island with a sizable ground force. We're just mercenaries. We don't even use it. This isn't our ship. That was actually our ship. We were just watching this ship. We're just mercenaries, all right? This ship belongs to the Scorch Hunter and his crew. Hunter and his crew. We're just, we're just here to. He's picking up a bounty. He and he didn't oh. tell you what the bounty was. Oh no, we, we don't ask questions. We just do what we're told. We're, we're mercenaries. We, you give us the go, we do it. While they finished the interrogation, I left to scout the island. The hunter had already broken into the keep, and some skirmishing had occurred inside. The keep looked to have a servant's entrance, or perhaps a secret entrance, around the back. There was little else to see though, so I made my way back to the others, who were rendezvousing with Rue. So so everyone but Samson um, is going to meet back at the the Silent Storm, the original boat that you guys came on. Yeah, we probably want to make our way towards the keep. That's where the firework went off. While falling back. I noticed the black ship was making its way to sea. Well, I thought something was wrong at first, but... Sammy, these... These mortals, they are... So kind-hearted. They were going to let them go. Can't have that now. I take no pleasure in being the secret keeper. And I don't know how you did it all those years, but... No one can know... What we know. I, I see that the boat is flowing away. 
I think about what the party was probably doing. And then I think about this is the safe island for Mimi and her brother and that no one can really know where it is. And that no no one needs to know and no one can ask questions about this. I fly to the boat. And with all my friends gone, no one there, I use my daggers and I slaughter them all. They're naked. They don't have anything. I turned the blood of I turned the deck of that boat crimson. We were cloaked by Loon's shadow as we made our way to the secret entrance. It was unguarded, and we peered from behind a tapestry into what could have been a barracks at one point. Now, it looked like a school. Yeah, open the door and look inside. Uh, looking in, it looks like an old training room. Um, oh. I know there's like a moving like. It, it's not moving for the sake of the story that we're going on right now. But it looks like it used to be an old kind of training room, uh, but instead it has been turned into kind of a like a like a laboratory of sorts. And you see potions and like books. Um, you see a desk and a book on the desk, uh, and then a larger desk where there's more potions and pots and cauldrons, and there's a chalkboard with uh, alchemical formulas on it. Time to loot. You also see a second. You also see a second desk as well. Um, the w- first small desk has books and and papers on it. The other small desk has nothing on it. Tradillion called the trees to fight with them, and they were coming for us just before Prayaria spoke up. Apparently, her sovereignty over the land bleeds over into this plane as well. She is powerful. And, and he moves. Kroom, 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 kroom. It's, it's okay. We have more friends. And looks down the hall and, like, um, immediately begins to, like, rear back as if he's going to charge down the hallway. And then, uh, Prayari, I'm guessing, what, what do you say yes. to him? It's okay. We have more friends. They are friends. <laughs> <laughs> it, looks at, it looks at you, Prayaria, and then looks at uh, Revenir, and it says... Also friend of Thorn. Thanks to the tree's help, we were able to find the Scorched Hunter and his men before they reached Dillion. There were just seven of them, which shouldn't have been much of a problem for the greatest archdruid to ever live. But the hunter came prepared, and I found that I could do very little to help my friends as well. I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna do the spirit totem. Uh, It is a 60 foot radius. Is that a druid spell? Um, I don't know why you'd ask, but yes. Oh, it, well, it's a feature. It's a druid feature. You attempt to call on the powers of your druidic class, and with your passive investigation and and the moment, you look and it does not come to you. But you look up at the scorched hunter, and you see he is wearing a necklace with a raven skull. And as you try to call upon that energy, it leaves you and just, you see it gets sucked into this amulet around his neck. And he looks at you and he says, you think I don't know about Tredillion and his powers? So what luck for you to encounter me in this moment. You, your death will be much more enjoyable now. We were very efficient in our fighting. Esperis entranced the rabble, Finn and Prey took out the strays, and her and I sniped the big man. Ludin had a certain fire in his eyes I had not seen before, and the hunter saw him as the greatest threat, and he took the brunt of his aggression because of it. So, let me do my damage. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Normal. Does he so, seem like he's shooting more arrows than normal? <laughs> <laughs> plus a d4, plus a d6. So that is 9 plus 5 is 14 more damage on top of all of that. Oh, damn, all right. And Luden is going <laughs> to know that homie's probably going to come after him now. 
<laughs> he sure as hell is. <laughs> he sure as hell is. <laughs> and he's gonna look uh look at his partners in crime and be like, Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh he's just gonna move like the opposite of where Finali is and hold his ground for whatever's about to happen next. <laughs> That's the end of Luden's turn. The battle raged. In the end, it was Esperis who smothered the Scorched Hunter. It was beautifully brutal. That's going to be... In him. Uh, 40. 58 <laughs> points of damage as I see him going towards my brother and the boy who looks ironic. hit points. Esperis! <laughs> He has I 45. How do you want to do this? My brother? He's looming over my brother and he's going after Finn. I like, I'm sorry, Ermir. I shove Ermir a little bit out of the way and I just lumber over to him. I'm going to smash his body into the ground and it's going to be pretty ugly. I'm going to take him by the neck and I'm going to slam him into the ground next to the people I care about, the boys I care about, the feet. Over and over again until his spine breaks and his skull explodes. I hate him so much. <laughs> <laughs> and you just <laughs> conscious earlier. That's unacceptable. <laughs> and you will end him. I cannot risk putting our next conversation with Tradillion into writing. Perhaps over tea, once we return to the wild. Which I can't expect will be long now. Yours truly, Samson Martis. Guys, we're live. Here. You're good again. All right. Y'all was wild. Hey guys, um, we're back. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, and yes, uh, uh, Deanna is out. It's going to be out this evening. Deanna is, uh, uh, is, um, has some outages over where she is and possibly has something to do with the outages that are going around all day today. So... All right, let's jump in. We return as you all stand in this room, the flames just blazing all around you, up the walls. It's ironic, you know the flames aren't real, but those from the Scorched Hunter certainly were. Esperis, of course, bits of crumpled remains from the Scorched Hunter still in one of her large gorilla fists as her nostrils flare, the adrenaline still coursing through her veins and primate instincts in control. 
Lude and you stagger as you try to stand. You all can see he has been burned very badly, and he does not look well. All is quiet. There is a subtle shift beyond the wall of flame where the Scorched Hunter was speaking, but then silence once more. Shaza? Are, are you in here? There's a, another shift behind the... behind the, the wall of flame in front of you. Finn will head in that direction. Um, as you kind of begin to move in that direction, you hear a voice, not one more step. Um... We're not going to- we don't mean any harm. Who are you? You hear the very deep voice, and, uh, and he says, I have a feeling you might already know who I am. Uh, Mr. T? There's a bit of silence and a little, um, a little bit more of shuffling, just a very slight dragging against the floor. Like a pace. Guys, I think Mr. T is over here. Oh, yeah, I'll go, I'm gonna go over and, um, yeah, Mr. Mr. T, Trudillion, it's, um, um, some friends of Rue, he's, he's arrived and we've, we came with him. He says, you came with Rue. Well, yep. on a ship. And, uh, would you do me a favor then, friend, if you are one? If you would place that amulet on the ground, it is very stifling. Yo. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, who's got it? <laughs> I think I have it. Maybe she's gonna throw it on the ground. At this point, he's obviously not... Sta he's not standing up either. He's almost starfished on the ground. Uh, feeling the cold air. I mean, cold ground on his body. Good question, though. Does Samson look like himself? Or does he still look like... I had to, <laughs> I had to, I had to drop that to make... Okay. As Brisa, a, a, yeah, a, like a he, monkey. Yeah, like he... He would okay. not... Like, there's, yeah, there's no way he would still be able to look like... Um, mm -hmm. Revenir Thorn. Um... There's another shift, and you all begin to see and watch as the flames begin to die down and disappear, and the room begins to melt away from looking like a prison cell in Avernus to that of a child's bedroom converted from a treasury. And there isn't much here. You see stitched brown leather ball in a wooden pirate ship, a small child's bed with sheets bunched up and unkempt, but there's splatters of blood that litter the entire room now, as well as very, <laughs> very small bits, and as well as very large bits of the scorched hunter just littered about the room. From when Esper East completely just Hulk smashed him. On the wall, on the floor, in the bed, some of the bodies are smoldering in the middle of the room, on top of what looked to be a, wood, a set of wooden blocks, now charcoal. The small bushes that Bark had sent to help begin pushing around the bodies and checking to make sure that they are did, dead, um, poking and prodding and kind of hissing with their pistols as they do so. And then standing in front of a closed door, as if protecting something, you see a tall elven man. His features are fair and handsome, but deceptive to his age. His hands are held out protectively in front of the door, holding a long gnarled staff that curls up into a crescent moon shape near the top. His hair is brown and long. You see two small braids at the sides of his temples kind of hanging down over his ears, and his turquoise eyes are stark beneath his sharp brow. You see a tree-like tattoo that goes from the base of his chin and around his neck down into his shirt. He wears a cloak of black feathers that flows down to his ankles, 
and you see small turqu turquoise beads woven into different places on his leathers, some braided in his hair. In the hand not holding the staff, he grasps, grasps an unsheathed dagger, and those of you proficient in nature can easily see it looks to be a massive megalodon tooth, intricately carved with various glowing symbols. And he keeps a protective stance, placing his staff and himself in front of the door, never looking away from all of you. And he waits for a moment. And he says, Shaza, are they lying? You hear a small voice from the opposite side of the room, completely opposite side of the room, near the entrance where you all walk through. You hear, Ugh! It smells really bad, Mr. Tillypan. The bad man's jellies is everywhere, and, and the gorilla smushed him all over my floor. And then all of a sudden, it just smells like strawberry jam, which is kind of relieving, but unsettling at the same time. Much better. I don't want to sleep in here. It's gross. Shaza. Oh, oh, right. No, Mr. Tillypan, they aren't lying. But the tiefling with the fake horn, there's something different about him. I'm not sure what. He's not really a tiefling. I'm not sure what he is, but I don't think that's superstitious. Uh, since he helped kill the angry man with the necklace, I think something bad just happened to him is all. <laughs> the whole party is just like hiding their laughter. They're just like, oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um. You see uh, Tredillion kind of relax as Shaza says that you're telling the truth. And uh, at this news uh, and the bushes, immediately, once they hear Shaza, they run and just kind of scamper in the direction of the tiny voice. And he says, uh, uh, can I come out now, Mr. Tillypan? And you all see kind of Tredillion shake his head. Not until I am certain the island is secure, Shaza. And he looks up at you all, and uh, he kind of like relaxes and sheaths his dagger, and he says, Thank you. I, whoever you are, you know Rue. I don't know how much you know, but you have, I assure you, prevented a terrible tragedy. Most likely saved countless lives. More than one thing almost fell into the wrong hands this night. And I cannot thank you enough. I would ask if you would aid me in making sure the rest of the island is secure. Of course. That's what we're here for. You All have right. a very anxious friend upstairs. Anxious? Who do you like mean? Like extend your arms like tree branches, like ah. ah. Bark, I am sure that he is uh, distressed. We've lost a couple of his uh, skin. I will do what I can. I, be I do believe that Rue was taking care of a small excursion of the maybe the Scorch Hunters forces that were heading towards his boat. We should probably go check on him. But as for the rest of the island, I don't I don't know if there's anymore, but we could put out a search party. Would that be good? There's about 10 to 15 more that we need to be looking for. If if the man on the ship gave us the correct estimate. Well, here, do you, Luden, would you like to go with me? We'll go get some of Rue's men and we'll, we'll do a search. Take a rest. We'll take a rest first and then we'll do a search. Yeah, I... I yeah. think Luden should rest. I can search with you. Okay. Alright. Yeah. So, um, everyone who is searching for the stragglers, make an investigation check for me. Or perception check. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to go check on Rue and make sure that they won that fight. Okay. And then uh, we'll gather, like, I don't know, 
a half dozen or so crewmates, maybe, to search the rest of the island with, to just to make sure we didn't lose anyone or we don't run up on a whole bunch of bad people. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, you you return to Rue. And uh, he has cleared out most of the northern part of the island. Um, kind of working with him over time, uh, you you all find the straggl- stragglers that are left over. He's you know clearing out some of the uh, some of the bodies from the shoreline from from the attack, and uh, some of the other crew members are uh, you know burning those bodies and kind of like cleaning up and kind of finishing uh, tying loose ends in that in that regard. But um, it takes a couple hours, but you all do take time to make sure that the island is secure and that um, the rest of the pirates are taken care of. And you yeah, do I so. Know, I know Priori is helping me, but I rolled a 25 to do so. Oh, then it doesn't, it doesn't take very long for you to find them. Like you guys, like they, they, uh, they are panicked and um, you're easily able to find them and clear them all out and- uh, Clear them out. They, they are in a state of, like, there's no place to go. So you hunt some of them down. Some of them are running to the shoreline, and they, they see that their boat is, like, parts, bits and pieces of, like, hanging out of the ocean and, like, still sinking beneath the waves and the wreckage from those, those boats. And uh, they are just, like, they're easy to find. They're panicked, and you guys take them out very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and short rest while they're doing all that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or do we? Did we want to keep any of them just for questioning, Prayaya? Or not? Nah? Mm-hmm. The ones we did ask didn't seem to know too much. Um. I mean, if there's, if there are crew mates from like the other ship, no. maybe we'll ask them. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then <laughs> they uh, most of uh, most of the rest of that crew um, was in that room with the scorched hunter. Well, we know who sent them. I think that's as much as we'll get. True, murder it is, and <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay. So we do murders. <laughs> you uh, you do murders and you return. Um, I'm guessing that you return to the keep after all of that is done. Would that wherever, be? wherever everyone else and everyone Rue would go and, and Tradillion is and wherever wherever we're hanging out. I I feel as though the rest of you guys would probably. Uh, return back to uh, the keep where Tredillion is. So we'll return there. Move everybody back. I would imagine while um, they're out, while everyone's kind of short resting back at the keep, Finn's probably talking to Shaza as much as Shaza (laughs) will talk to him. Uh, Shaza is invisible. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, I don't think when, that'll stop him. When <laughs> talks him on the other side of the wall. <laughs> yeah, you can still. I guess. Yeah. It, is there something you in particular that you wanted to say to Shaza while he is invisible? Yeah, I think Finn will say something like, "Um, hey Shaza, have you ever met your sister before?" Um, yes and no. Hmm. Well, that's a weird answer. Well, you should be excited, because we brought her with us. Oh, I know. I can sense her. She's nearby. Well, aren't you looking forward to seeing her? I am looking forward to seeing her. Of course, you know, she's probably looking forward to seeing me, because I'm much more talented. But, you know. Well, she did tell us that she's looking forward to seeing you. She didn't say that you were more talented, though. But I'm sure she probably thinks you're very talented. She doesn't have to say what she already knows, I'm sure. But yes, 
That must be it. She uh, holds very good tea parties. Tea parties? Interesting. I, I have very interesting naval battles that will be interesting for a tea party. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. They would go good together. I could turn it. I could make the giant teapot a new ship. That would be pretty amazing. Mm hmm. And she's definitely looking for more forces to fight the evil Vogmit Krusty Toes guy. <laughs> I've got the perfect hero for her Sir James Remington the Fifth. Very exciting. She's going to love meeting you. So yeah, Finn just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on, and he just talks to him the whole time. Uh, when the rest of you return back to the uh, back to the uh, the keep after the entire island has been cleared, and um, Rue um, Rue returns as well to the keep, he like I want to keep him. I want to keep in mind he does not bring. He does not initially bring um, Mimi with him. Uh, I'll go ahead and say Luden comes back like a lot more bandaged up. Um, I already rolled a medicine check for today so that I don't get my poison blood to take off my max hit points. I got a nineteen, <laughs> um, but he has like. Uh, he's wrapped himself up, um, around, like, his chest and stuff like that. Um, if you guys, like, look at his arms, uh, they are definitely disc discolored all the way up to his eyes. Um, the tattoo on his hand is still there because, like, it's magical and stuff like that. But everything else around it is just, like, just not there. Like, blood and sinew. But that's also wrapped up, so you really don't see that, but... It the biggest thing is, you notice, like, on his face, where his crescent moon is, that has faded immensely. Like, that is, like, it looks more like a birthmark than a tattoo now, just from all of the heat and the disfigurement on the skin and stuff like that. But he comes back, um, his hood up, and he's definitely, like, not feeling good. He's probably limping around a lot more, um... But he does look a lot better. I rolled really good on those. Uh, I rolled like max hit points, basically, back up to full. But he's he still looks really, really tired. Um, so he's more hobbling in than walking. Luden, you should sit down. And your bandages look a little tight. You should probably loosen them. Your circulation's gonna come off. Luden just sits down. <laughs> Thanks, Finn. You're so welcome. What are we doing? Uh, Tredillion, um has made tea for everyone, and you see, uh, you see some of the shrubs kind of like going over to the shrubs that have been like trampled and just kind of picking them up and they're, they've begun to kind of clean the area and, and you see Bark just kind of like follow, like Bark is following the small shrubs and he's just kind of like hobbling and then the small shrubs pick up, pick up the bodies and hand it to him and Bark just takes it and then follow, continues to follow the, the smaller shrubs and they, they walk through the, uh, through the keep to the different areas, and Reyna is losing her mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad about foliage right now. Like, why would you do that to me? Um, and, uh, and there's this long table that you can see, and Tredillion invites you all to take a seat. Um, and uh, he, looks, uh, he looks over in the corner, and he goes, It is all right, Shaza. And you immediately, as he says that, you see um, Shaza drops invisibility, and you do see a small child with a playful smirk on his face. Uh, he looks to be about seven years old, with mm -hmm. vibrant, glassy, yellow glowing eyes and pale, milky skin. His hair is as white as new fallen snow, just like his sister. Uh, but it's short and jagged and kind of frames his face. He kind of reminds you all of Cyprian a little bit in that regard. The only individual you know with stark white hair. And he just kind of like, um, 
just kind of like puts his hands behind his back and begins rocking back on his heels and his toes and and he just um he kind of like looks at mr mr t and uh, Tredillion just kind of nods a little bit and so then Shazza just kind of sits on the floor and just begins to conjure like pirate ships that begin like moving around like his little space and like there's a waves and a thunderstorm well thank you friends we have not been here long about a month i had been working on securing the island renovating and fixing this old fort if i had more time i assure you they would not have broken through they would have been lucky to make it to the shoreline, to be honest. Well, you did a fine enough job. Do you know how they found you? you? I don't. I have some theories, of course. It's a long story. Let, let me explain. The only person who knew where I was, of course, was Revenir Thorn. And Groon, her advisor, it's Saltstone. Groon had reached out to me, claiming to have found a child with immense power. Manifested from chaos, he said. I began looking into the curiosity. We discovered that she was a child of Sunbask, a swindle twin. A dangerous discovery, as you can imagine. If one had manifested, so had the other. Thus began the race to find what we now know is Shaza. It wasn't hard, unfortunately, and I think that is how the word spread. Perhaps how the individual was able to find us. Shaza had manifested in Acacia, in the Zuli Cove. He had cast illusions on heaps of rocks and boulders along the mines, in the streets, along the docks, disguising them as raw meridium and platinum ore. So, of course, sent the workforce into chaos, tourists and citizens shoving rocks in their pockets and pushing each other out of the way, scrapping to... to get these rocks, which... For, unfortunately for them, were not what appeared to be. I was able to find him, luckily. I quickly made my way here with him. I knew this island was long forgotten from my younger years and would hide us well. Unfortunately, what happened at Lazuli Cove drew far too much attention from the right individuals, so it seems. I guess that is where the hunt began. But I must ensure this island is completely hidden for any future of the invasion. I do have a plan for that. Well, if you're worried about your secret getting out, these people were bounty hunters, right? That is what that is what the Scorch Hunter, hunter is. Yes, he is a bounty hunter. No so, longer a bounty hunter, and no longer famous. Or alive. Or alive. And he kind of raises his tea and kind of takes a drink from it. Well, kind of like cheering you all on that. Yes, and yes. and that's all well and good, but who was the bounty for? Like, who put out the bounty? That I do not know. Oh, I know the answer to that one. Yeah. Take it. One, um, Balak Insignir of that sort? Insigni, perhaps? Is that wrong? That is wrong. It's Balak something. <laughs> um, you mixed the scorched. <laughs> Danny's like, I wrote it down. Yeah, <laughs> remembers. I was, yeah. A bird. I was a bird. Balak Mornfire. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. The name does Balak bring Mornfire. a bell. But I have not seen such an individual in quite some time. That name does ring a bell. 
Hmm. But he must remember you to arm his people with that necklace. It is true. That was the most jarring, I assure you. Must know me very well. Speaking of things that might have happened in the past, um, do you know what other allies Ruthorn might have not, not Ru, um, I'm sorry, I'm not feeling well. But do you do you know what other allies know of not only our existence, your existence? I mean, we have obviously have our captain that had heard of us, but. I'm going to be honest, I, I really thought that we were in this alone. And to find out that not only two, but at least three more people are in this with us, it, it might help to know that information. Especially if we come across some more people, we could ask for that help. Only Gurun knows about my, my whereabouts. Gurun and Ru. Okay. The uh, individual that you, the third, is, uh, and he kind of looks at Rue, and uh, Rue just kind of like folds his arms and turns his head. And uh, Tredillion looks back at you and says, Obviously, the, you know that the Revenir Thorn is no longer with us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just been thinking about it. It was worth a, worth a try. But obviously someone else knows this Belakmorn fire, and we have no idea who else he has told. Well, I imagine we're probably pretty fortunate right now that there seems to be a... Um, it seems as though they have perhaps maybe the lock and the key, but, but nobody has both, right? Because Block knows that Shaza exists, but he doesn't know where he is. Otherwise, he wouldn't hire a bounty hunter to find them. And then the only successful bounty hunter that knows where they are, well, he's on the pyre outside. You don't think that'll tip him off to where Shaza might be hiding? The fact that his bounty hunter didn't come back? I don't think he ever knew where the bounty hunter was going. And if he does decide to scry, he will discover that he cannot. Are you planning on staying here? He kind of looks at you with me time. Oh. You do need time. How long? I don't think very long at all. I have a plan to unite the twins, of course, and I am not entirely sure what will happen, but I do believe that there will be a massive surge of energy. I have something that should absorb most of the energy and will help to keep us all safe, as well as to hide the island properly. Long term, what are you thinking of? But that will hide us, I assure you. Um, passive insight here, let me see. Uh, Luden, Finn, Luden and Finn. He looks a little uneasy at the mention of this plan he has. Is there anything we can do to help? that I know of it. It is... It is a little different. Uh, it is the second thing on this island that would have been catastrophic if it was in the wrong hands. Shaza is not the only thing on this island that is of value. What's the other thing? 
he I mean, I mean if you don't yeah, mind telling yeah. us i mean we are we i don't know if you know but we know groom pretty well and we were good friends with revenir we're on this big old thing yeah so he um he doesn't say anything and he stands up and he leaves the room for a moment i guess he doesn't want to tell us i guess okay. that's a no Sorry. Hey, that's Sorry, on he gets me. More tea. <laughs> I mean, I was about to ask too. It's kind of important, right? Right. He mentioned it twice, so you think he'd want us to ask? And he looked yeah. really uneasy. Like he looked like he wasn't sure about his plan. It wasn't mm-hmm. the best plan, but it's probably the only plan they have. It's a good enough plan. It's like an eighty percent plan. Mm-hmm. This tea is delicious. <laughs> it's orange mm-hmm. blossom. <laughs> yeah. I'm- Luna just watching these two go talk about this guy and just looking at the twin and see if he's listening to this conversation at all. You just look over at Shaza and Shaza, like as soon as you look at him, Shaza looks away. <laughs> and just kind of like <laughs> pretends yeah, like he's figures. not pretend like he's not paying attention, but he totally is listening to every <laughs> single word that you all say. <laughs> yeah. Listening to us talking smack. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, like kids repeat everything that they say. The loot is just keeping his mouth yeah. shut. I'll just, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll just ask, I'll just ask Trude, or Rue, who's there with us. I'll be like, uh, I assume the captain's here with us, right? Yeah, he's there. Uh, I'll say, Captain, uh, how 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 were things both side? Did you lose any men? Is there anything we can do for you? We had some injured men, but it wasn't anything that we couldn't handle, and they're being patched up back on deck. But we had the drop on them. And we did well. You all did very well. He what? looks at he he looks at Finn when he says that, but he says you all. And then he just kind of very quickly, like very awkwardly, like looks back and just kind of like looks at the fireplace. Well, I tend to agree. I think we all did a, a fantastic job, and I think we made quite a good team there. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you are, Captain. Rue! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of does a slow turn of the head and looks at you, and he, like, he, he, he kind of, like, like, his head was resting on his hand, and he, for a second, he kind of, like, looks confused by your comment after insulting him so much and being kind of passive-aggressive. He looks confused at first, and he's like... Thank you, Samson. I I appreciate your words. I think we do make a good team. And he just kind of like looks at you and stares you down for a second, like it like he's trying to figure you out. And then just kind of like leans back again very quietly. Luden definitely recognizes that look. And he's just like, yeah. It's weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> he just thinking to himself, yeah, I get it, man. It happens. At this point, uh, Tredillion will come back, and he has a box. Uh, roughly, it's a small polished box, but it doesn't look like extraordinary in any way, and it's about yay big, right? Roughly. And he kind of brings it to the table, and he opens it up. And he lifts, puts his hand in it. And you can immediately see, those of you with high enough um, passive investigation, which I think is most everyone in here, uh, you can easily see it is a lead line box, right? And when he does go to open it, he does kind of like wave his hands around it a couple times. It takes maybe like two or three minutes for him to undo all of the magical enchantments in order to open it up. It is ve- It's a very secure box. And... When he, what he takes out doesn't look extraordinary in any way, shape, or form to any of you, except Samson. The rest of you, um... Even Esperis with her special eyes? It's not that kind of thing. I'll, I'll explain it in a second. It's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's not special eyes. <laughs> with her special eyes. Esperis, look. 
Look with your special Get closer. Eyes. Look with you your special eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great commercial. <laughs> um, I get within five feet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what it looks like to you, it looks like a broken piece of polished stone. Um, dark. Um, but it's, it's, it's very geometric. But it's cracked. And it looks like a chunk of another piece. Now, when you, when you look at it, like again, it just, it just looks like a geometric piece of stone. It doesn't look very, it's not glowing, it's not giving, you, you don't feel anything in its presence, but it is dark and almost like, almost like obsidian. And there are some special kind of carvings in it that are very worn away, almost like the Blarney Stone, right? Very similar to the Blarney Stone. And it's, it's very worn. Samson, you have lived thousands and thousands of years. You are the only person who could possibly know what this is. This is a piece of Vera. A piece of Vera's power that has dimmed. Mm. Dang, Samson's old. Like, old, old, old. So, this broken rock <laughs> is this <laughs> the dangerous thing? It is very pretty rock. It's also broken. Is he touching it? No, Trudillion isn't touching it. Well, I mean, like he touched it to take it out. But Can I not touch it? Sure. I'm, I'll go over and I touch it. I mean, you walk over and he just kind of like he eyes you, and like just watches you. Like he he's he's weary. Like like this is a very, this is a big deal, you know. Obviously, and you walk over and you just touch it. I mean, not with like one finger. Like I kind of like inspect it. Like, do you not? Do a, you ask, or do you, do you ask at all, or did you just walk up and grab it like a toddler who wants a he, who wants a Cheeto? He, <laughs> look, he knows. He 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 knows. I look as Ermir might say, you look with your eyes, okay? That's but true. I I didn't, I didn't want to look at it. I wanted to hold it, so I walked <laughs> over there. Uh, Tredillion would probably say something along the lines of, "As you immediately walk over to touch it, he was like, gentle." I just, I go, may I? He just kind of like holds his hands out as if like you're about to like drop a piece of broken glass or like, you know, fractured glass. And he's like, Gen gentle, gentle. But yes, you may, just, just be careful. Make sure as... to support the head of the rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you touch it, it is ice cold, just cold and nothing. Is it like a special so, rock? Yeah, what does this rock do? It is hard to explain. It has lost its power long, and long, long ago. But by uniting the twins, we may be able to harness the power with it and create, and harness it, and use it to hide the island from view from anyone. Okay. And what is the plan if you cannot? If we cannot harness it, well, we cannot harness it. But it does not hurt to try. Is uniting I mean, the twins gonna explode the island, though, if you can't harness it? I don't believe so. But we probably should not be close to them when we do. Okay. Uh Samson looks very skeptically at Tredillion. You think it can be like a sponge? I think that nothing in this world could possibly bring it back outside of a manifestation. This piece will lie dead and dormant. But nothing more powerful than uniting these two twins could possibly bring it back. It is, I hope, and a chance that we might be able to harness it. This piece of what? What is it? I mean, it's a rock. What? 
why, how is it special? What is, what is it? So, long ago, far before there were humans and there were elves and dwarves and all of that, long before all of this, um, there was, there were these gods. You've heard of them, you know, Ardur and Vol and Vera and Brees in the works. Yeah. And when the, when the masters of the weave rose to power or, you know, um, the V and Trompery and Bouclier, you're familiar. When they rose to power, they gathered their godlike power from, by defeating these old gods. When they fell, most of them dissipated. Brees Vol was the ocean, which is where he lives now, and Brees is just the air, kind of dissipates, and Vol was fire. Well, Vera, Vera was not that. Vera was the earth, and so there was nowhere for her to go, nowhere for her vessel to dissipate to. So when Vera fell, her her body was broken and pieces of her residual marks were left over in corners of the world and they lie dormant like this one. It's a part of a fallen god. That's a piece of, of Lady Vera? Looks like it. Well, so what happens if you bring all the pieces together? It's not it's not like it was all the pieces broken shattered when when Vera fell that's why she she still has a presence today because she took portions of her power and hid them. Yeah, she's basically like poisoning the earth. In a way with magic. Oh. So she took pieces of her godlike power and hid it so the masters of the weave couldn't take it all. So she wouldn't be gone forever. That's why the Old God still reigns, but they can still do, they don't reign, they can still do things. They still have that sort of power. And so in these rocks, this one has been used. Not sure what for, but it's empty now. It lacks. But whatever this, whatever Vera was made, whatever Vera made her vessel from, it's like a battery for magic. She wow. put all of her power into a large vessel, and this was what was left over. Seems as though Tredillion believes he can harness whatever happens when the Swindle Twins meet. Why don't we bring Cassius out here and let him look at it? I, he probably wouldn't know anything about it. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's one of those things, you know, anything to jog the memory, right, Finn? Sure. I mean, I don't think he's going to know anything about it. It's not exactly he, his forte, you know? Mm -mm, not at all. And he's got to protect Mimi. Okay. It's, it's an idea. It's okay. I mean... What? Go ahead. It, it's just like you said, Samson. It's just like a shell. Yeah. Now it doesn't mean anything. It just used to be a piece of Vera. Now it's just whatever Vera used to store her magic in. And so now it seems as though we're going to try and capture whatever residual magics come off. How, how will you give it back to them? Or do you think they can just take it from you? I mean, is there magic after all? Oh, are you suggesting that he's trying to take their power? Is that what you're I'm, saying? I'm, I'm asking, like, yeah, I'm asking, like, what's the plan for that? Like, I guess maybe that sounded worse than it was. What's the plan for, like, because what, what I imagine is he's imagining is they're going to come together. There's going to be this influx of magical energy and that this will, this will, like, temper the effects and hold that magic until they're older. In which case, my, my, plan, my question was, like, how are you going to give it back to them, or are you just going to let them take it when the time is right? I 
he looks at you and um, he just kind of like studies your quote like he studies your question in his mind for a moment and uh, he says they will be powerful enough to be able to take whatever residual magic lies dormant in this stone it is it is like it will be like a storm you catch all the rain in the jar but the clouds still there they're not taking they're not taking anything from them it is something that they already would have expelled what are your plans what as they get older what happens then they're old enough to leave they're old enough to hone this magic what happens then their power will we grow nonetheless go? their power will grow nonetheless my hope is to teach them and bring them up in a way that will help us with the seven okay the joys of parenthood Fun. it would be better for them to be on our side than to be against us and we are going to need all the, all the help that we can give. Still doesn't what? suck. <laughs> Why now? Why do you think they manifested at this moment of all time? We believe, I, I have discussed this with Groon, who is a great scholar like myself, and we believe that the Swindle Twins are born out of a great moment of chaos. And I can only imagine that that moment of chaos was because of Lacambria and right. all the death that had ensued there. A moment so monumental and ground-shaking that it changes everything all the fates and all the choices people could have made cut off immediately that there's so much power in what happened in lacambria even though it feels like a candle snuffed out yeah all we, of that energy we get it we get we get it we get it we get it thank you uh, it's lacambria he means to say i, I, I feel like asperis would not like um, the interruption <laughs> so I feel like she would think that was very rude. He means to say we know we know quite a bit about about um the changes, big changes happening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Esperis. <laughs> this is a dangerous plan, Tradillion. Well, if you have a better one, I am Willing to listen. I have no one I'm willing to trust to help with this. How long? I said not not long, but how long? Are we staying here for this to happen or do we need to go ahead and leave? We can do it tonight. You are all welcome to stay here for the evening. Uh, there are spare rooms and uh, uh, my library, if you so wish to use it. Sure. And Ludin will put down, um, he'll go through his bag real quick, and he'll put down uh, the greater healing potion and speak with plants. Um, potion back on the table. Like, well, you're alive, so... I think these are yours. He kind of looks down at them and he goes, Yes, uh, thank you, but uh, those uh, Shaza and I, we made them together in a class. You you are welcome to take them. We we can always make more. Thanks. I appreciate I your honesty, though. Thank you. Yeah, he actually like shudders a little bit once he says that. <laughs> <laughs> honesty. Yeah. yeah. He'll he'll actually just take the um, the greater healing potion. 
and um, just look over at Finn. Oh, I guess I could take this one. I've always wondered what it would be like to talk to like a plant. Of course you were. Of course you <laughs> would, <have> been. <laughs> I'll grab it. <laughs> you uh, you have a potion of speak to plants in your inventory now, Finn. Yes. I can't wait to see how that comes comes into play later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have our own little Henry Cram- Crabgrass moment. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of cute things, Priaria will put down um, Mountain so that he can run over and play um, on the ships with Shaza. So um, as you as you look down and you grab Mountain and like you, Amit, uh, Shaza had stopped playing and was listening and like once you looked over, he started to play again. <laughs> and Mountain just kind of like gets placed on the ground and just kind of like looks up at you and then looks over at Shaza and is just like. And just like go help him play instead of other activities. Um, Shaza just beams this big smile, and as as Mountain is running over, you see like a a big pirate hat with a feather manifest on his head, and like um like the feathers just kind of like hanging down, and Mountain just like as he's running <laughs> and um, a sword manifests in his hand and like uh, the ship just kind of like comes down and a gangplank comes down and like Mountain is just like <laughs> <laughs> um, Before, yeah, until the until the to the event this evening, I'll, uh, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a rest, short rest and then I'll go um, back to the boat. I don't know if Rue is going with me or not. Um, he, he he's probably hanging out here, but I'm gonna go back to the boat. And any of the people that are hurt, I'm gonna go help them out in some way. Anyone who's injured over there, dropping magical healing for all of these pirate people, just to help them out. But that's okay. what I'll do until the show tonight. So you'll just the show. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you ju- you're just so you're just helping Rue out and sorting that out with him. I mean, not necessarily Rue, right? But his crew. <laughs> his crew. Like any okay. of the, any of his the people room. that were hurt. Yeah. Like you get somebody like they've got like a broken bone and they need that healed. Um, I could do that. Okay. You you do indeed do that. You help the crew and um, uh, no damage was done to the boat. They were too far away. But the crew, there are some a couple crewmates that were injured, and uh, you help you help uh, patch them up and. Uh... And like obviously, I help get the celebration started. You know, get the wine going and and all that as well. You, you, know, you know how it is. You certainly do. Heart, hearts and minds of the crew. You know, help them out. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, uh, the, the rest of you. Oh. What are the rest of you doing? I was gonna say Luden is going to ask for ask Prayaria for the poison book. Uh and he he's gonna to go it. yeah, he's gonna go try and um he's obviously gonna ask first. But he's mm-hmm. gonna go try and raid their uh their their herbs and all that shiznit to see if he can make some some poisons for his arrows. And also go to the library. But those are the two things that he would do. Do I even have to ask what you're doing? <laughs> we meet in the library. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, Prayaria, what are you doing? Uh, I imagine um, since she is a little apprehensive about the plan, she will stick around um, Tredillion and just like, just kind of ask him questions and things. Um, look at his cool knife. Is there anything specific that you ask him? That you want to ask him? Or is it just kind of general, you're just talking to him? She's just in general inquiring about, like, the magic and, like, what he knows, what he theorizes, and how sure he is about that. Okay. All right. So you share that conversation with Tredillion. And and he does put the rock back in the box. It closes it um, once everyone's done ogling at it. Um, But you, you have that conversation with him. Ermir. Um, I think Ermir probably just 
spent some time hanging out with Shaza and just kind of like interacting with him, you know, playing with him, talking to him. Um, he'll pull out a couple of his little trinkets, like he'll, uh, he'll pull out like a little music box and um, he'll pull out a little like, like, um, he'll pull out like, like a, a, a little put together little Rock'em Sock'em Robots game for them oh, to yeah. play. Oh, yeah, he yeah. loves that. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> he changes what they look like every time you guys fight. Um, mm-hmm. The very first time you pull it out, he immediately like makes your guy the be- like the look like the scorched hunter, and then he makes um, he makes his look like the giant gorilla, and he just begins to like beat on you with the giant gorilla. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, you got him, get him, get him. Just look at the sunset. Just look at the sunset. <laughs> And um, and yeah, you know, like he, like you know, just kind of ask, ask him, like you know, not, not, not like interrogating him or anything, but just like kind of sprinkle in questions about, like you know, where is your home, or you know, what do you remember before this, and and you know, what are the other uh, manifestations like, you know, see, like. What, you know, see, see how much, well, I'm, I'm, I think, I think I'm, I'm, I'm interested in knowing like how much, how much of this thing is a kid and how much of it is like a celestial being. You talk about like, is the Easter bunny hanging out with Santa on Saturday? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> um, I want to know exactly what level of power we're dealing with right now. Uh, as, uh, as, okay. <laughs> the kind of responses that you get while you're playing with him and you try to do the whole child psychology thing where you distract them with a toy and then ask them questions. Mm-hmm. Um, you get a lot of like, I don't know. Where are you from? And like, when you're like, what do you mean, manifest it? What's a manifestation? Uh, the other, the other signs. <laughs> um, for, for for instance, my sign, uh, uh, the month in which I was born was Rhyme Does have have you met a someone who goes by that name? Have I met anyone who goes by the name Rhyme Womb? That seems like a really weird name for a person. Mm-hmm. You know, my name um, is Shaza, right? My name isn't Sunbask. You know that, right? <laughs> Not that it matters, <laughs> but you do, so, right? He just kind of like <laughs> looks at you like, really, mister? <laughs> <laughs> and then like he punches your 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 uh your scorched hunter with the gorilla again. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got distracted. No, but <laughs> maybe not named Rhyme Womb, but someone who's close to it. Mm. The same way you're close to uh your sign. No, I don't know anybody. feel like you might. Mm. Not that I would tell you if I did. Hmm. Well, I don't know. You don't seem like the type to keep secrets. (laughs) You don't know your sign, do you? (laughs) You don't know much about Sunbask, do you? Hmm. Well, I know that you're a bit of a swindler, and you must like to play practical jokes. Hmm. Right? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, at this point... At this point, uh, he slowly slide like he was kind of he was sitting on his hands the whole like one of his hands the entire time that you were playing, just kind of like wiggling back and forth, and like mm-hmm. you know doing his rock'em sock'em gorilla, and he slides his hand out from underneath his little bum, and he lifts his hands, and you see the um, the corks uh, the corkscrews, two corkscrews that Micah gave you back in the Cambria. 
that have pearlized handles that you never used for uh, umber. And he just slides at me, just like, mm, begins to smack you with his gorilla again. And then just kind of giggles and gives, like, cuts, cuts his eyes at you. So, he's going to uh, swallow the trauma. Keep that <laughs> down here. Um, <laughs> as, he, as he remembers uh, that moment with his friend, um, and he goes, ooh, that's a neat trick. You know, you would have really liked it back where I'm from. We would uh, play little jokes and, and pickpocket each other all the time. You know, it 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 kept it kept us sharp. You know, I mean, of course, we didn't know have magic like you do. I think that might be kind of cheating, but is it though? If it's who I am, is it though? Hmm. He just kind of smirks at you, and this kind of like devious smirk. You get you're getting <laughs> you're getting different vibes from him that you got from Mimi. It's a different. Hmm. It's in a different way. I though. see. Yeah, he's like the more chaotic one. <laughs> I hmm. mean, she's chaotic too, but in a different way. Yeah. Uh, so you prod this child, and you don't get anything out of him. You don't. You you can't swindle the swindle twin. <laughs> uh, but you do spend uh, spend time playing and prodding the child for the rest of the evening. Uh, library folks. Yeah. You may make investigation checks for me. Yeah. I'm looking for some more poison books, by the way. Okay. Okay. Oh my god, I'm so I'm so glad you rolled high. <laughs> I want you to know I made this just for you. <sighs> okay. So, um, Ludin, you find uh, you find a book called Bardic Legends from Faraway Lands. Uh, you uh, you also find a book called The Spider King, which is a fictional tale of an adventurer delving into the underdark to slay a fearsome giant spider. Um, and then, of course, the Bardic Legends book is a book about legends often sung or performed by bards. You do find like a book about basic herbalism. But nothing about poison specifically. But you do find a book about like herbalisms and different kind of uh, plants and um, horticulture, essentially. Gotcha. There's actually a couple of them. You could there's I mean with him being a druid, there's probably like five different books about different kinds. No, probably more than like twenty books about horticulture. They're all different. One's about bushes. One's about trees. One's about flowers. Um, just whole bunch of slews of books about different kinds of plants. Um, Ludin's just... Nope. What are you looking nope. for, Ludin? Poison books. You know Prey has one, right? Got it right here. Oh. <laughs> Selling through them all, I guess. You do, you find a lot of fiction and you do find a lot of, like, informational books and you gather after looking through the bookshelves, Ludin, that... It probably wouldn't behoove, uh, you know, Tredillion to have books about poisons and uh, with the Swindle yeah. Twins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he puts it together, like, as he's going through and finding different, like, different children's books and stuff like that. And, like, some graphic novels and maybe, like, some very angsty teen, uh, like, those teen novels that he's like, ah. Because he obviously read all those as well as a kid, or at least different version, earlier versions of them. And so he'll just start putting the book up the way he found them. As you put them back in the right spots and stuff, like a good, like a oh, yeah. good library oh, yeah. helper. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm not stealing from him. <laughs> thank you, Dire Bear GM, for the raid. By the way. Oh, thank you, Dire Bear. <laughs> Welcome, Raiders! Okay, so, okay, Daniel took care of the shout out. Thank you, everyone! <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Everyone for the raid. Library <laughs> helper, that's cute. <laughs> hmm. Finalai, you begin panning through the, the different books. You find a, a witch's guide to homebrew potions. Ooh, look at this, Ludin. It's a series of tips on how to be the most successful witch you can be. We could be witches. 
Look! <laughs> this probably has potions and, like, poisons in it. Awesome. Maybe... But you maybe... can't have it. You can just look at it. Maybe you can borrow it. It's like, it, it would be like what I would equivalent to, like, you know, grade school potion book. You know, how to be the best witch that you can be. Kind of, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Perfect. Um, Just by the great level. <laughs> which you probably would have scanned your finger over while you were looking, Ludin. Uh, yes. You yeah. also find um, the great Gadsby and other oh. famous illusionists. Ooh. <laughs> I could use this one, too. Rain is tickled pink. <laughs> <laughs> um... You also find, uh, as you're kind of panning through, a very, very large book uh, that you see called The Tome of New Beginnings. Hmm. And you kind of pull it out and kind of, like, look through, and, and the, sub the subtitle reads, A Guide to Surviving in All Biomes. And it will give one individual, after reading it, proficiency to survival. Hey, that's pretty cool. We might need this. We're having a hard time surviving half the time. <laughs> Maybe we could have like a group reading and we could all get like, ah, no, my camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe we could have a group reading <laughs> and we could all, uh... <laughs> now I look creepy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, these when are you, great books. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> when when you pull wait, there's one more. When you pull out that book, there's a small book hiding behind it that kind of falls to the side in the back. I'm going to retrieve it. Obviously. <laughs> you look at the side cover. And there isn't any kind of artwork on the on, it's just it's a it's black. It's a little black book. And the side spine reads 50 shades of fay. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh my god Mr. T has this book Luden look Luden he's over. keeping he's keeping like like naughty novels in his, in his library you don't know if it's not even <laughs> <laughs> and somewhere Prey suddenly feels differently about it which is not sure why but... <laughs> no no the picture the picture inside of it looks not <laughs> <laughs> well, I Samson we would probably all... like this one. Samson's are definitely we... already read it. <laughs> are we... For sure. Then are you going to loot it? it? What's that looting? Are you, you going to ask to borrow these books or are you just taking the books? Uh <laughs> What if that was the way he was going to teach them about, you know? The birds and the bees. That's like a, that's a weird way to do that. Is that is that how I you don't... learned, Luden? <laughs> I lived on a farm. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I don't understand what that means. <laughs> He's gonna like pile up his books and be like, I guess I could ask if it would make you feel better. But then Go I'm not giving it. them back. <laughs> Like, of course not, then. I wouldn't expect any less. Not till I'm done reading them. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you found everything that you need. And Luda's gonna just put back literally all of his books, because he did not find what he needed. <laughs> uh, or he'll look back at Finn before he does. He'll like, you want anything about bards? Yeah! Give me that one, too. Yeah, he'll give he'll give Finn all of the legend stuff and the bard book and all that. Ooh, stuff. Ooh, Spider that King! That one sounds really exciting. How could yep. you not want these? Do you not like to read, Luden? Eh, I, I'm more of a nonfiction kind of guy. Hmm. I mean, I like nonfiction too. If you want, you can borrow my my new Pantheon book. Uh, I also am not really that interested in the gods either, but I will definitely might try it out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, thanks, by the way, for, you know. For what? In the fire, you know, 
getting me back up, and I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was... You made me kind of worried, honestly. You were looking pretty rough. Yeah. It was, uh... Not my my finest moment. Um, this was why I asked if uh, we have any more potential allies. First time I thought I might die, you know, or one of the few of the many times I feel like I might die with you guys. Well, it's not our fault. We're in a lot of dangerous situations. Yeah, I'm not saying it's anybody's fault. It's just. In some packs. When did you want to change out your bandages? Maybe we could do that. Maybe I could help. Uh, uh, sure. Sure. All right. And Luden will go ahead and just start taking off his armor. Um, in the library. Okay. We can do it here, I guess. Wait, if you don't want to do it, you said now. I, that's what I said. No, we can we can do it now. That's fine. Oh, okay. And Luden starts literally just take it off. Um, and so, like I said, as he's like unwrapping the bandages, it looks better than before, uh, but still looks absolutely awful. Like um, infected. Yeah, inf- yeah. And I don't know if you guys have ever like know about burns and stuff a lot. Like, but the biggest like problem with burns is making sure that you don't get like dehydrated because after you burn your skin and stuff like that your body loses the ability to keep the water in that you drink so a lot of the water like so obviously like the bandages and stuff like that are like wet uh so that that's one one big thing with it and there actually might be still a little bit of blood and stuff like that on his arm and definitely on uh his back the big one thing that you notice though is as he takes off his like the bandages on his back like that have been wrapped all the way around is like i don't know if you guys remember but a long long time ago luda took off his shirt and he has those giant scratches from that bear attack from when he was little and that looks absolutely wrecked like it's i'm not going to describe it <laughs> But it looks pretty bad. <laughs> I was um, like hiding behind my glass, bracing yeah, no. for impact over here. <laughs> no, I just say that it's it was already scar tissue, but now it's burned. So it's like scar tissue that was healed over, but then it was burned. So it just it just doesn't look good. Uh, yeah, and immediately, like as he's taking all this stuff off, he'll grab um, his water skin and just start pouring it down his back. We, I mean, this is a library. Be careful, Luden. There's lots of paper around. Uh, it'll be fine. Just keeps poured it down. Okay. <laughs> She's like a puddle of water on the floor. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, and the last thing I think uh, you guys would have already noticed. His hair is like at least six inches shorter than it was. Like definitely. <laughs> um, And so he'll... He'll sit down and um, he'll pull out, you know, his own bandages and stuff like that. I'll hand some to Finn and he'll just start wrapping up his arms again and placing the bandages. Let's wash it first. And he'll bring out of his pack, like, some salves. Um, and he's like, you know, Luden, you really shouldn't be messing with poisons while you've got all these open wounds on you. Uh, the powder could get all over into the cuts. Here, stretch out your arm. Stretches out his arm. <laughs> so yeah, he's like but, spreading the salve. I'll be like, yeah, but to be fair, Finn, as you've already pointed out, you know, we we have to kind of are in dangerous situations quite a bit. So it would make more sense to be prepared, especially for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, but at the very least, you could not be a danger to yourself. Okay, then. Sure. I will be careful with the poisons. But I'm still gonna make them. Uh, okay. Yes. I 
he glances at the door. Um, I was, we haven't talked really in a long time. I was wondering if you could give me some advice. You know, I think maybe I could trust you to be honest with me. Um, everybody else is really nice, but I think sometimes they say what I want to hear because, well, they want me to be happy. And you don't care so much about that. You care more about like, telling me the truth. And, uh, What's up? Um, so you know how, how the captain might sort of be related to me? Possibly. It's not like confirmed or anything, but you yep. know. Um, what do you think I should do? About what? I mean, he's your dad, isn't he? Well, I don't know, but if he is, would it be wise to, I don't know, complicate things by approaching him, talking to him, finding that out, confirming it? Okay, Finn, I have no idea what your backstory is or what's going on with your dad, but you know I'm looking for mine, right? And um, I would do just about anything to be able to talk with mine again. And that's why I joined up with you guys, you know? There are plenty of times I wanted to leave, I promise you. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, like, I, I, it's fine now. Um, it's more than fine. I think it's, it's better than just being with a bunch of Sparrowhawks, especially after what happened... And Sable. Uh, but, yeah, like, what are you afraid you'd find out if you talked to your dad? I don't know. I, I guess I have this kind of, like, story in my head that I've always had. And I'm almost, I'm almost afraid to break that illusion. Like, wouldn't it be better for it to just be, like, this thing I've imagined in my head? You know, like, I don't know. So. I mean, he's really cool. He, he looks really cool. It's just. It's a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, Revenir Thorn. And then Rue Thorn. It's just. Um. So. Okay, so let me tell you, I think it would make more sense of where I'm coming from if I tell you what happened. Um, and so, like, Luden starts to get a little serious. He'll actually take his arm back away as you were wrapping it and take it back up, and he'll just sit down, cross his legs, and be like... I'm going to sit down and cross my legs, too. <laughs> like, okay. And uh, Finn, he's going to just go like, okay, look, I haven't... I haven't told anyone here this. And I didn't feel like I was probably going to show, tell anybody this for a while. Um, Cause I mean, but if this is good enough time it isn't. Look, I've, when I grew up, I had a stepdad that- um, I Me came too. By. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Completely fine. I just, yeah. Anyway, I, but I also had my real dad and I knew him early on. Um, I actually have another brother. Um, and so one day, uh, you know, Alka lived out deep in the woods. And one day, uh, they both left. Um, it was when I was really young, maybe like five. And I think it had something to do with some guy we found in the woods or whatever. I, I, it's really, really fuzzy. But he stayed with us for a little bit, and next thing I knew, my dad left a note with my mom saying that he needed to go to some place thrice or something like that, right? And so he took my brother, because he felt that he was old enough, and uh, never saw him again. 
He wrote a little note saying that uh, he was he was going to be back soon. Then in, then we got another note said that he had to stay a little longer, um, but he would be back. And we got another one, and then all together they stopped coming. Right. So. So it was just me and mom for a while, and then stepdad came in, and my mom fell in love again, and they had a kid, and that was Logan. And my stepdad was an elf, and all these things. So, all that to say, once Logan died, I came back home to find my stepdad and my mom, but they were gone, and I... I buried Logan, and I was just, uh, I was really angry, like really angry, and I, I, I busted down the house, and I just, I kept hitting things, and, and I got to the fireplace, and I, I hit the, I hit the fireplace, and out pops out, like, tons of letters, right, and I read one. Turns out, my dad never stopped writing. In fact, he was asking me to write to him and wondering where I was. And everyone knew, even Logan. Like, yeah, I I, I found some more things at our place when, when I went back to look and they, they he had... I assumed he was probably going to tell me at some point, but he didn't get the chance. And There's a moment when you f- realize that everything that you know is a lie. Kind of makes you unravel. Um, and quite literally everything I knew at that point was a lie. So I'm, I'm looking for my dad. I'm looking for my mom. I'm looking for my, my stepdad. But you, not a day goes by that I go back and I don't think that maybe what if I had known from the beginning what I know now I could have spent I mean at least another good 10 to 15 years hanging out with my dad and my brother there's a whole bunch of what ifs Finn that you can think of and it's, it's torturous, I I believe, but I would much rather know the truth than another lie. Because if if you've been lied to your whole life, then what does your life really mean? You're living quite literally a lie, right? True. But how do you know Logan and your mom weren't trying to protect you? What if, what if your dad was, I don't know, off doing something dangerous and they didn't want you to pursue him? I mean, I can't speak to their intentions until I find my mom or my stepfather. But at the end of the day, regardless, it hurt. And I don't, I don't know what their intentions were. And there's a really thin line between love and hate. And there were many a times, especially throughout this journey, that I didn't love Logan. I mean, I'd wake up some days and I, I would hate him more than I've hated anyone else but he's, he's still my brother and those feelings would drift away and they come in and out and in and out and I would much rather have known the truth than have to hate my little brother right were you close to Logan yeah before you knew yeah all the way up till his death um well not to excuse him or anything but If I were Logan, and I knew that you were going to run off to try to be with your dad and your older brother, I might try and hide the letters too, just so you don't leave, just so we could spend more time together. 
And yeah, it's hurtful and it's selfish, but in a way it almost sounds like that was his act of love. I think you might be right, but that doesn't change the way that I feel. I think I think we're all entitled to our feelings, Fed. And if that's the way that he felt, then it's it's the way that he felt. But when I lie in bed at night or wake up in the morning and I slip into that hate, his actions cause me to feel that way. And that's the only thing that I can feel at that moment, you know? But look, that's my story. You can go talk to your dad if you want to or not, but you know, what have you got to lose? It's the truth, right? You're the one that decides what you do with it. I think you're right. I've, I've wondered this kind of my whole life. And if I just let it pass by, I know I'll regret it. And I'll always keep wondering what it could have been, even if it's not what I expect or want it to be. And it would be kind of like living a lie. Thanks, Luden. He's no, gonna reach you. over and hug him. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then remember he's full of burns. <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Mm. Uh, oops. Mm. Here, water. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll start pouring <laughs> down his back again. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Let's let's finish this up. I, I still need to go check out the the pantry. Let's see if I can figure out if they have any poison stuff in there. Fine. I, I'm not going to say anything to anyone else. I'm pretty good at keeping secrets now. No, unless you want me to. <laughs> like, what was he thinking to himself? Why would he say that? <laughs> not that I'm keeping secrets from the party. Just that I'm not going to, like, open my big mouth and say anything to anyone else. Because yeah, Luda, Luda people expect say me to do that. Luna doesn't say anything. He just keeps looking at Finn. You know. Like, what else is he going to reveal? <laughs> like, okay, Finn. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, it's not a big deal i figured i'd probably need to tell everybody anyway especially since we're, we're apparently heading to the feywild and stuff yeah that's gonna be interesting well yeah. i'm glad you told me like this like a special private conversation between best friends <laughs> he'll just uh, start wrapping his arm back up <laughs> Wonderful. Real quick, I want to shout out now that there's a break in our role play. Thank you, Kareem Samir, for the raid uh, and the hype train, and all those of you who contrib contrib contributed to the hype train. Thank you so much. I will thank you all individually at the end of the stream. Thank you, everyone. So. Is there anything else that you would like to do before what Daniel has referred to as the show ensues? Yo. No? All right, I'm excited. So, you all prepare wait, for- let me, Wait, let me short rest. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, all right. So you all prepare. I'm gonna switch the scene over here. You all prepare to reunite the Swindle Twins, the manifestation of Sunbask. Luden's gonna walk over behind Ermir while they're doing this. He's gonna pull uh, down the thingies and let his floaties out, and he's just gonna be like, "Just in case, you know." <laughs> <laughs> oh don't gosh. touch 
She's so <laughs> high on the AVs. <laughs> Ermir, you immediately re, re, re-inflate with your arms and your legs, and you look like the Michelin man, just... <laughs> or the kid from A Christmas Story. <laughs> And it's you can't put funny. you can't put your arms down for a moment. <laughs> and Luda's like, serious, Ermir. You don't know like, <laughs> you don't know if this it's gonna be a shockwave or something. And we we need you up, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tredillion takes you all down into the catacombs beneath the fort. A secret passageway. Shaza at his side. You all walk down the stone steps that lead down into a grotto. There's a cave chamber that leads out to a cove where the waves are crashing in. The smell of salt and the breeze kissing your faces with the mist with mist. The sun has long sunk into the depths of the sea. Only the moonlight illuminates the water, flowing in and out of the private grotto, once used as a back door for the troops that fortified this coastal keep, and as a way to receive imports from the ships. Tredillion walks across a flat plateau of rock, usually covered in a foot of water during the high tide, but smooth and glossy from the receding tide waters. The rock is about 50 feet in diameter and leads out to a small grotto, opening, or the gro- there's a grotto to opening that leads out to the sea. There's a small puddle in the center of this circular plateau, only a few centimeters deep. He places a strange looking dim stone in the center of the pool. The rock is lifeless against the black glassy water. And Tredillion takes Shaza by the shoulders and leads him to the center of the plateau, their footsteps leaving ripples behind them. He kneels down in front of Shaza, placing a hand on his shoulder. It is going to be all right. Uh, Don't be afraid. Shaza takes a moment, and you can't be certain from this distance. It almost looks as if he's slightly shook his head. And he looks down at Tredillion, his violet eyes changing to yellow and glowing brighter. His lips pull into a playful, knowing smirk, and he places a hand on Tredillion's shoulder and says, Don't you be afraid, Mr. Tillypan. It'll be all right. Just, uh, hold on to something. Tredillion kind of furrows his brow, and he he looks a little unsettled by Shaza's statement. His lips kind of part slightly as if he might say more, but Shaza just taps him on the shoulder as if to reassure the elf. I'm ready to see my sister now. He looks down, nods quietly, squeezing Shaza's shoulders. He leans in and he and he whispers in his ear and looks back at you all before standing up and walking over to where you all standing on the outside of that plateau. Is there anything you guys do before Mimi's brought in? Oh, anybody mm-hmm. got a shield around or something like that? <laughs> I was gonna say, is there anything to hold on to? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's probably some stalagmites or something, you know? But we could anybody? all hold hands and hold on to each other. Luden grabs some rope and starts to tie himself instead of holding it. Sam- Samson's gonna get as close as like Tredillion will let him, just so he can see everything that happens. Okay. His eyes are bad because he's so old. So <laughs> cool. Luden's, it. Luden's eyes are great because he's so young, so he can see from right where he is. All right. Probably just hunkers down. 
um, gets gets low into the wall. <laughs> yeah, Ermir is also watching from a safe distance. And we'll probably hang right behind Samson because he's real curious too. He's like <laughs> peering around him. Okay. The stone sits there quietly, kind of ripple. There ripples against the movement as Shaza stands next to it. As Mimi is brought onto the island, you don't see her, but you can tell she's there. Shaza begins to glow brighter. And you can see kind of outside of the cat, the cave opening, there's almost like a second moon and you see light glowing brighter out there as well. What you can only guess is Beanie. And he goes even brighter, his pale white skin becoming more luminescent. She moves into the cavern, begins to descend the stone steps, the cavern glowing brighter with each step she takes. With each step, like stars, Rays of light begin to bend around the room from each of them, as if they have the power of a black hole, with the force and strength of being able to bend light itself. You see Shaza's smirk melt into a beaming smile as he sees his sister, and she reflects him as well with a smile. She moves quicker down the steps as her feet hit the puddle and the ripples of the water begin to move upward and droplets begin moving toward the ceiling. The bending light begins to move faster and faster. And you all see these water droplets move up and all around them. Streaks of light begin to form between each and every droplet begins to form constellation. They move and rotate around the room as Mimi walks up next to her brother. And the room is ignited with blinding light that explodes from the cavern. You watch as the light itself begins to bleach the cavern stone white. The constellations fill the room and begin to move back toward where Mimi and Shaza stand next to one another. And each constellation begins to connect and build on itself behind each swindle twin, like forming a new contour drawing, an arm, a head, face begins to form. And then they stop moving once the figure has become complete. And the constellations form into two new figures. And you see them standing behind Shaza, and one behind Mimi as well. One, a woman with long hair, and her smile is alluring, but carries an aura of deception and charm and playfulness. She looks across from her at the tall man that's now smiling. The man has short hair that frames his face. And he smiles back with a smirk that knows more than it lets on. The constellation figures both lift their hands up and begin to move what appear to be tangled threads around their fingers as they move their hands up. Like threads that coalesce into a beautiful webbed pattern like a dream catcher as they move their hands outward. They move their hands above the heads of both Mimi and Shaza, and you see the threads break. And the remnants of those threads begin to swirl around the room like stardust. They look down at their hands, freed now. All four figures look back at you all for a moment, and they smile. Shaza winks and Mimi's eyes cut from her to her brother 
as if she has no idea what he's doing. But you all know better. The two children giggle as all four look back at one another again, lifting their hands up and clasped together. And as soon as they touch, the room ignites with a burst of energy and light. Your ears are ringing and pulsing as you feel this massive shockwave of energy and power knock you all back prone, throwing you against the walls behind you. Everyone who did not secure themselves takes 10 bludgeoning damage. Um, I actually have this thing where I can, never mind. It's okay, man. You got floaties on. You <laughs> bounce. You, do, you, you, you bounce. You, 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 you just floaties. bounce against the wall as as you take this this force. I'm already up against the wall. It's good. You all <laughs> stagger to get back up as the light recedes once more. And you look up as you try to adjust your eyes. If you've stared at the sun for too long and it's hard to see with that blue kind of like shadowiness that kind of envelops your eyes and you look up and you see Shaza and Mimi although they are no longer the small children you first set your eyes upon in human years they now look to be 13 years old as you regain your stance, they stand there smiling at one another. And next to them, you see floating and turning slowly like an asteroid in space, the piece of Vera, glowing brightly with the same luminescent energy. Oh boy, it, <laughs> it worked. Ludin, Finali, Ermir, and Prayaria. Your eyes are blurred and ache from staring at what appeared to be the sun. But out of the corner of your eye, outside of the cove entrance and in the distance, you thought you saw a streak of gold light. How far away? This is like really far away, I assume. You can just you can walk over to the cave entrance if you wanted. Yeah, I'm gonna cut my my rope off, and very swiftly actually go ahead and run off to the cave entrance and see if I can see where that thing went. You look out among the waves and the seemingly endless expanse of ocean and see streaks of gold in the distance raining down from the skies to the earth below. You hear Mimi from behind say, just kind of, well, Mimi, Mimi just kind of looks and she walks over with her brother in hand. She doesn't say anything just yet. Uh, anybody in the cave, you might want to look at this. What is it? Finn will rush over. Whoa. Yeah, rushes as well. Ermir does as well. Uh, S3 Shh. does as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Samson probably does as well. Too. Yeah. <laughs> we, we drag Samson's limp body over to. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those stars, Samson, that are falling from the sky. That's amazing! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And you do hear Mimi kind of chime in. She goes, "Yes, the stars are falling," and that's where we're gonna take our break. All of them. Oh, like, is the sky yeah, breaking? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> a Hold. bad thing. What's going on here? Hold on, Chicken Little. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this was a nice moment. What do you mean? <laughs> Not all the stars are falling. Uh, okay. 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 <laughs> Some of Burns them are, like, though. like, you heard me. The yeah. stars are falling. <laughs> Every Not single all of them. one is... <laughs> Just some of them uh, are like, they look basically like meteors coming to Earth and just- Just the way you said it, maybe it's like, yes, the stars are falling, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> just just metaphorically, like, it's out of to, the water, another it, seven emerges! It's supposed, ah! to, it's supposed to insinuate Mimi has 
like knows Rose. kind of what somewhat what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> yes, I think that's where we're going to take our break. You uh, you do notice that it is heading in the direction of Aurora. Awesome. Oh, um, we got to do that. And you all that. are sensitive to light for a week, so. We're Merry not Christmas. even there. How are we still terrorizing Please. Aurora? We're not. <laughs> <laughs> Aurora's <laughs> terror strikes for a again. Week. Happen again. <laughs> back, back on our BS. <laughs> we were never off. <laughs> <laughs> So, we are going to take our break right there and when we return, uh we're going to we're going to yeah. We got we got more things to, more things coming your way. More things coming your way. So, we'll be back in just a minute. We'll see you on a little bit. Those are- well, hello there. Of course you came to the grand dwarven city of Digbrand to see me. Marbell Pebblegrit, tale extraordinaire to kings, queens, heroes, and legends. Have you gazed upon my latest masterpieces? Yes, this one for you. Don't you see how it calls to you, speaks your name? You are gorgeous, darling. The colors, the line work, the gods weep in the presence of your beauty. No one has looked more stunning in a pebble grit design. Please, I, I, I cannot bear to gaze upon your perfection for too long. You can find this mesmerizing merch at inkandlyre.com. Go and unleash your fabulosity today and help support Ink and Liar. Do stop by my shop again. You simply must tell me about all that, that adventuring thing. Well, ta-ta, darling. Extra, extra, read all about it. What's that you've got there, mister? Why, this right here is Nine Realms Gaming. Nine Realms Gaming? That's right, top... We got your dice vaults, we got your dice towers, dice trays, hero vaults, you name it. Oh my! Careful now, don't swoon into traffic. You can mosey on down to their website now. Use exclusive partner code LIAT10 to get 10% off your purchase. What was that code again? That's LIAT10. L-Y-R-E-10 at 9realmsgaming.com. Hurry, they're selling like hotcakes. She walks through the valley of Ikea. She shall fear no wardrobe. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, uh, does anyone have a lockpick? No! No, we don't need one! Everybody, we, we back. are and we back. back. We are back. We are back. We are back. <sighs> all right. Thank you all for the wonderful comments. Thank you so much. Um, I went back and I, I read the I read those because I get so into the moment mm-hmm. I can't see what's happening in chat. Thank you all so much for the comments. That just makes my night. I love you. I love reading that. It just makes me so happy. <laughs> um, all right. I'll. <sighs> Stop, I'll stop geeking out here. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, so jumping back in. You all stand back up, looking out amongst the heavens at the entrance of that cove grotto cave, and you see what looks like shooting stars, just shooting across the sky, arcing over. They look so small and tiny, but like threads, they shoot out in the direction of Aurora. Is this a bad thing? Ludin just says out to the world, not to anybody specifically. Well, 
they're just stars, right? They're really tiny. Hear, hearing the way Mimi says, the yes, the stars are falling. I say, um, are they going to fall on anyone? Guess it depends. On if people are in their pathway. Ludi just looks down and goes like, God dang it. He did it again. <laughs> did, does he say that? Yeah, he just says it out loud. <laughs> Mimi just gives you a weird look like. I mean, I guess it would make sense that the world would react naturally. You know how long they will fall. Probably tonight. The whole night. Possibly. Paris hey, looks he- in horror. <laughs> Here's another question. So, you guys were born because of the Cambria. Is there any other manifestations that can be born because you two are here now. I don't really know about all this religion and manifest uh, stuff. That's a really good question. Does she just look like she does she look like she knows, but it's just not telling me or make an inside check. Yeah, I'm going to make an inside check on this one. Oh god. Because in the when the big bad happens and they have like three of their own manifestations because we didn't go look. <laughs> uh that's a nineteen. She looks like she knows more than she's letting on. Is it a good question that you're willing to help me find out the answer for? Maybe. So, what do you want for the information? You play a game with us. Mm. Just me or everybody? Just you. Luden looks at everybody. Is it worth the information? (laughs) It's a game. It's going to be fun. I'll play the game if you don't want to. I recommend okay. that neither of you play the game. Don't play the game, Ermir. And Ludo will step back. <laughs> We've played other games with Mimi. It should be fine. Yes, I'm just hurting a little bit, so I feel like uh, Ermir would probably be better because he could play better with you guys. So, Mimi, Saja. Is that fair? Well, you the one who asked the question. So no, I don't think it's fair. Well, I tried. Good luck, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Folds immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Luden will step back up. He'll be like, hmm. Do you have another one of those marks? She gave Finn. Mimi looks at Shaza. And then Shaza looks at you. He goes, how about I get one if we play the game? I play the game. Hmm. That doesn't really seem like much fun. Hmm. Besides, you're tricky too. And we know how you tell your half truths. Right, let's play the game. <laughs> Roasted. <laughs> oh dear. Let's play the game. Wonderful. 
They walk out of the room. They don't even ask you to follow. They just begin walking up the steps. Luden limps after them, I guess? <laughs> oh, they're very quick, and, like, they're gone. Oh, great. I guess he just grits through the pain and tries to run as fast as he can with them. I'll, I'll help him up. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give him a shoulder. I'll help him up. I'm not just going to watch my they're boy much... <laughs> climb the stairs. They're much... Be like, be like, nah, he, he good. He good. He's gay. There. You think he might need you? Huh? Oh, I know this game. It's hide and seek. You have to go find them, Luden. Luden's gone. He's trying as hard as he can, <laughs> unless everybody's just, you know, walking beside him. Well, you <laughs> are limping. <laughs> yeah. They're just walking a few paces behind you. <laughs> <I'm helping. laughs> just walking a few paces behind you. So, Luden, what are you going to do? Luden's like. <laughs> I'm going to do my best, guys. <laughs> I'm going to have to walk faster than that if you plan to find them. <laughs> Thanks, Finn. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, so I so, assume, um, is, is it hide and go seek? Do I find them at the top of the stairs or they're just gone? They're gone. Great. Um, Prairie went to get um to, what was his name? Tuppy, Tuppy. Tredillion? Tredillion, yes. I mean, Tredillion's <laughs> in this cave with you. Okay, yeah, so she's gonna ask him, like, um, is this a good idea? This terrible idea, honestly. You should never play a game with them. Especially, I mean, I don't even know what to expect at this age. When the younger age, it was, it was you know, it was mild, but now they're older and they are, look, they look like they're much more powerful now. I... Don't think that was a good idea. No, I no. That was not. That was a terrible idea. No. I don't know. Well, come so, on. She just grabs him and like follows after everyone else. Yeah. So uh, Luden would uh, like to look for the children. Um, I guess. Let's see. What were they wearing? As um, as as all this happens, uh, <laughs> Samson is going to leave. And go back to where the party is and where I'm sure all the crew members are now watching like all these stars go across, right? And like on the deck of think, the ship, yes. Yeah, and just think to himself, like, I told him once, don't shoot anything you can't kill. And here he goes. <laughs> He's just gonna keep going. <laughs> um while 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 Ludin plays uh plays uh, hide and seek, I guess we'll call it for now. Um uh, Rue will um, Rue will side eye you a lot, Fidelai. Oh, okay. I thought, <laughs> I thought he, he was looks... following Luden, but that's fine. Yeah. You were following Luden. It's okay. I'll come back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, now? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um. Hmm. <laughs> so Finn's going to glance over at him and be like, <laughs> he's going to send, he's going to talk in his mind. Hi. He just kind of looks. <laughs> 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 um. He kind of like like he he's sitting he's sitting down. Um, I'm guessing like this would be back in like that kind of dining hall area. And he's sitting there, and he's just kind of like tapping his toe a little bit, like 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 nervously a little bit. And uh, like he stops immediately when you say hi in his head, and then he looks back at you, and he responds in your head, hi. You can do this too. That's just like a loud voice. In he kind of jolts a little bit when you do that. Like, <laughs> of course I can. Really? Why? I mean, I mean, it's just not everyone can. Well, 
people in in my my family can. <clears throat> right. I guess that makes sense. Right? It's very awkward and he's just kind of like <laughs> Where um where did you say that you came from? I mean, that's not really usually things I talk about with people, but I'm I'm guessing you've probably been there. It's kind of like a island out in the middle of nowhere kind of hidden away other than maybe from a few ships his face drains of color at this point and his foot begins to tap a little faster and uh, he avoids eye contact at all costs and he says, how, um, how is Nalea? <clears throat> she still wear those red flowers in her hair? Yeah. I mean, they're kind of like attached to her hair. <laughs> they kind of grow there. He kind of, he smiles at that a little bit and kind of like, Almost laughs, but doesn't. She's... She's fine. At least, well, the last time I talked to her. It's been a while. She's still with that, uh... That Arland fellow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is. Wait, no, I should be asking you the questions. I mean, not to be rude or anything, but I've got a lot of questions, too. Like... He pulls the seat for you to sit next to him. Not looking at you and still very, like, awkwardly, like, staring at the fire. Finn will go over and take it, and he's just... <laughs> I guess he's looking... He's, like, looking down, then glancing over, then looking down, then glancing over, trying to get, like, a read on, um, on Rue's face. Sure, make an insight check. Okay. 26. <laughs> He's very uncomfortable and um, awkward. And he, you've seen him on the ship. You've seen him command his men. Um, I mean, you've been watching him. Prayari has been watching him and like stalking him. Um, he is a man of great charisma and the way he holds himself and carries on but around you and in this moment he's a mess and has no idea how to deal with it he's but he's trying his best you can see he's trying his best and he is tripping through this this moment <laughs> essentially <laughs> what business did you have on the island. He takes his hand from out, out from underneath his chin and kind of sits up and looks at you and says, I was young and naive. How and, old? Oh God, I don't remember. I, I don't <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the age that would be what you are now. How about that? Okay. <laughs> Don't make me do math right now. <laughs> um, but essentially, he will tell you that, and it will be, it will be mm. the age that winds up. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> he says, uh, "I was, uh, I was young and naive. Uh, just started smuggling. Uh, the island had opened up to Sable. They made a treaty with them." And I was on that ship. I, I wasn't a captain. Wasn't a captain yet, but uh, I was really honored to be a part of it. 
It's the only country, the only place that was ever able to open up any kind of communication with the outside world. And it was so exciting. I, th I thought I could convince, you know, Nalea to, to leave the island with me. Uh, but again, I was so naive and young and I guess I was just new, different. How long were you there for? It wasn't very long. It, they had a very strict contract with Sable. We couldn't stay long at all. Deliver the goods, leave. We weren't allowed to go anywhere on the island. We had to stay on our ship. But deliver the goods. So... <laughs> you knew my mom for all of what, a couple days, a couple nights, and you tried to convince her to leave the island <laughs> with you. His face is straight faced. <laughs> He's just straight faced and he goes, He's straight faced, but then he takes a, a sigh and he's just like, he just looks at you and he's like, I mean, looking back on it, it's stupid, of course. Like I said, I was young and naive and dumb and just ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's kind of sweet. You're, no you're, you're ma. Nalea, she, um, she was the first I ever really fell in love with. And you, uh, you, you are, you know, my the Thorn family can feel emotions based on touch and it's been in the family for years and my mother was always different though she's very chosen I couldn't feel it with her like like I could my grandfather anytime he'd pick me up or and embrace me coming home from adventure and I I could feel his joy and, and hear how happy he was to see me. But mother, she was different. She could sense it just by being near. Her connection was so strong, she'd only need to be close by. I suppose maybe that was Vera's way of guarding her mind, but keeping her strong. Honestly, I feel like it must have been more maddening not able to let go. I could always let go of my grandfather. She always hearing and sensing the family's emotions. I'm guessing that's how she found you. She did look at me a little weird when we first met. Like she knew something, or maybe she recognized something. And well, during her last time, during our last time with her, she said that I looked, well, she said, you look so much like him, and I didn't know what that meant, but I guess I do now. He just kind of, like, looks back at the fire for a second, nodding. She always just knew. She always just knew what to say, too. I never know what to say. And, well, I mean, I I mean, I do know what to say, but in this moment... Never mind. Um, <laughs> That's okay. I never really know what to say, either. I usually say the wrong things. I usually... I mean, I don't. I ought to also... I, I, I didn't know. I... Nalea never told me. The last time I visited the island, she never... She didn't come back. She didn't come to port. And when she broke my heart and never spoke to me again, 
I decided not to take that route anymore. And I got on another ship. So you loved her, then? Like, really loved her? I... I don't know if it was love, but... I was stupid and ridiculous to feel so much of that, with just barely meeting her, and... Of course, she's an elf, and I'm... I'm not gonna be here for very much longer, you know, in comparison to her, and... It was ridiculous. When you're that age, you, you do silly things like that. I mean... Love can be stupid. Love can be silly, right? I think in a way she had feelings for you too, but... Elves, they don't feel the same kind. I mean, they feel love differently, right? They live for so long. At least this is kind of what my impression was living there, watching everyone, because I'm not completely elf. <laughs> All elf. It would be silly just to, I guess, dedicate your love only to one person or one thing. Love is like seasons, right? To some people, I suppose. But not everyone. Mm. But some people, yes. Of course. This is really weird, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, I- It is so weird, and I feel like I'm just in, I'll almost feel like I'm covered in sand, and I, it's just everywhere, and I can't get it off, and the more <laughs> I try to get it off, the more it gets on me. I mean, you did shoot a bunch of cannonballs onto the beach, and I guess there was probably a lot of sand everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess so. <laughs> he kind of he kind of smiles there for a second and does chuckles a little bit, and he looks at you and he says, "You know, uh, your great grandfather is uh, Bastian Thorn. Uh, Tristan Thorn is is your your uncle, your, your great uncle actually, and Neela is." Uh, the, the, the other two are, aren't around, but uh, Neela, uh, that's your cousin. And, uh... My cousin, okay. Palladius, and... uh, that's your grandfather. And, of course, my mother, Revenir, was your, was your grandmother. You, um... You can... You come from a family of great people. Selfless, selfless people who, who saved many lives. Did so many great deeds. Um, if, uh, if, if you like, you can come by my cabin and I can tell you all about them. I can? I mean, yes. Yes, I mean, I knew Revenir for such a short amount of time. I can't even really confidently say I knew her. I wish I could have... I wish I could have grown to know her. But, yes, I would love to hear more. Are they all humans? Like you? Where, uh... Where Kalishtar. Very, very rare bloodline. The only one that I know of, actually. Kalishtar. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Okay, I guess that makes me kind of Kalishtar too, right? Hmm. He talks in your head. You must be if you can talk to me this way. Oh, oh, that's where that comes from. Okay, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, the... Were there more people on your island who could do that? No, just me. But I always, everyone always said I was kind of weird. Because <laughs> I, I didn't learn how to talk till I was like six, out loud. But I would always talk in people's minds. 
Um, kind of nods. The touching thing, like the feelings touching thing. So that's a thorn thing, you said? It is. Uh, it is. So is that why when I when I held hands with Cassius, I could also feel his feelings? He gives you a weird look, and he's just like, What? Well, Cassius, he, when we held hands back at the sleeping vaults, he looks con- very confused and bewildered. And he's like, How, where did, where does he come from? Where, where, where's he, where's he from? Who? Oh, you know, like Cassius, the Cassius, like the hero, Vera's, wait, Vera's, oh, is that, Vera's champion, is that why? Like, you're telling me. Yeah, like, (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Actually, I was the one who resurrected him. That was all me. With some help. But it was mostly me. He doesn't know what to say. I know, it's pretty amazing. We've been, like, traveling with, like, a, a hero all this time. And you've been on a boat with him all this time. Can you believe it? And he likes playing cards. Just like a regular person. So you're telling me what it could great gods alive. Uh one one let's let's start let's re, let's start back at step, at step one for just a, a moment. So first of all, when mm-hmm. you touch his hand, you can hear his thoughts and feel his emotions. Yes. We don't do it Are often. Are you because sure it... that you can? Yeah, I mean, I can... Well, I don't know if he'd appreciate it. We could ask if we could demonstrate it back at the boat. But yes. Just like when I shook your hand. Do you remember? Okay. Um. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um. Okay. Uh. Well, this is a lot to take in right now. Uh, Imagine and, being me. And you're telling me that he is the actual Cassius, written in the heavens, constellation, Vera's chosen Cassius, who disappeared thousands of years ago. That's the one. And you know how right, I know it? sure. Why not? Right, right. Because right. he is. And also, we've met another Celeste set. His name is Cyprian, and he's really nice. And they're like best friends. That's how I know that they're both, you know, Celeste's set. I'm gonna need something stronger than orange blossom tea. <laughs> oh, God. Give have a jug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that that's her. Uh, alchemy jug. <laughs> go ahead, and uh, does it do a uh, straight rum? Probably. Hasn't disappointed me yet. Knock on it. Rum. Straight rum. Just straight rum. You conjure rum in your pot. Uh, He takes out his glass and he's just like, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. All the way to the top. Alright. He downs it. He's like, alright, another one. (sighs) He he takes a couple drinks. Shakes his head. Kind of laughs a little bit. Um, lets himself loosen up. But he talks to you a little bit more about random things, and uh, until he until he's a little bit tipsy, and he kind of he's like, <laughs> you know, they said that I was the last of the thorns. The whispers I heard at my own mother's funeral, saying that my name would die. And how could I let my mother, my mother's name, die? <laughs> and he, he looks a little sad for a moment. 
And uh, he turns towards you, Finn. And he just kind of like scoots his chair up closer to you. And he says, Finn and I, you know, I have something for you. You do? I do have something for you, actually. And he reaches in his breast pocket and uh, he just takes out a small polished salt rock from out of his, uh, from out of his pocket and uh, holds it out to you. Another rock. <laughs> He'll take it. You take it and looking down, you see a coat of arms, a gear uh, that kind of pinwheels out like the sun and at the center, a blooming forget-me-not. Is this your family sigil? Or, I mean, our family sigil? Eight. Um, he's the crest of Soul Stone. M my home and, and your home. See, they said I was the last thorn, but I'm not. Finn and Lai, Thorn. You are Lord of Saltstone. And he takes another drink. You know, the keep sits fairly empty nowadays. And it's not quite as lively as it used to be. This fight, seven... You and your friends need a place. A place? You mean like a place we could just stay every once in a while? You and your friends need resources and all the help you can get. This I can do. You, uh, you are, um, my son. That makes you a lord of salt stone. Groon tends to it and Anila visits from time to time. With my mother gone, it just sits in a ghost shell what it once was. I think that you will give it new life for you and your friends. But Groon doesn't like us very much. Would he be happy about us dropping? Oh, Groon will be fine. He doesn't even... I, he doesn't even realize. He get over it. Wow. Okay. A lord and saltstone. Okay. There's plenty of rooms. There's like six rooms. Uh, Wait a minute. There's a garden terrace on the roof. Are there others? Or is it just me? What do you mean? Well, do you have, like, other kids? No. How do you know? You didn't even know about me. I haven't really... let myself get hurt, we'll just say. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I see. That's... I mean, that's... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we gotta find you someone because <laughs> that's kind of sad he takes another sip well, thank you that feels great well, I mean I want to help because you're my dad and wow you know it's funny you should say that. Originally, I kind of hated him, but I don't know. I kind of like something about him. About who? That Samson fellow. Oh, Samson, he's a widow. He's commanding. <laughs> he can be. Yes, I don't know what you're saying, Dad, but no, no. You don't he... think that he would be interested in a captain? I mean, 
he probably would. He's interested in everything. No. <laughs> Oh, no. so you're saying that he's gonna break my little heart, eh? I think he would. He breaks everyone's heart. In one way or another. He's he's very nice. Samson's like my best friend. That would be weird. Shame. And he just kind of like takes another drink from his, his, his rum-filled teacup. If you have to do it, can you just like not do it near me at all? Maybe I can just like be blissfully unaware. <laughs> Well, maybe I'm overthinking it. It's probably dumb anyways. Ah, I need to stay focused. Well, this rum is not helping. No, but you should drink more and he'll fill up his cup again. <laughs> the two of you uh, spend the rest of the evening just kind of talking and laughing and, and you become more relaxed, especially after he's been drinking and... Um, he a, a bond begins to form and you get along and he begins to tell you about the books in his cabin and all the books that he's read and he tells you about um, that all of these books are books that his mother had brought him on her adventures a lot of them are from her that she had brought some of them are from him from where he had gone and that he had kept on his ship from all do you the mind, various. Do you mind if I take some with me? Um you can you can borrow maybe like two or three, maybe. Okay, I'll give you some too. We can like trade. I think that's a grand idea. I have one more question for you. By all means. Are you a dedicated worshiper to Lady Vera, like your mother? <laughs> Not quite as devout as my mother, honestly. It's probably why I uh, kind of stand out from my family. How so? I mean, uh... I, I'm not a devout worshipper of any god, really, but I do respect the Lady Vera, and then in this, for the sake of my mother. Hmm. So you've never met a god, say like I don't know, Levi or anything. <laughs> and have I ever met a god? No, but Cassius comes pretty close to it after finding out that he exists and then of course a piece of Lady Vera today. Today has been quite a day let me tell ya. Quite a day. <laughs> he takes another drink. Quite a day indeed. <laughs> okay. I was just curious. I'm I'm really into like, you know, religion and stuff. I like to read a bunch oh, about it. Oh, you're religious. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Yeah. Not for Lady Vera though. <laughs> Well, who do you worship? Um, you know, Livy. <laughs> he kind of like puts two and two together now. Oh, I see you. That's why you brought it up. Okay. Yeah. But well, let's uh, let's talk about something else, shall we? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he just diverts the topic. <laughs> Anyways, oh. <laughs> like he just doesn't want to talk about religion is essentially what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get that vibe. <laughs> um, and you guys spend the rest of the evening conversing. Um, uh, the rest of you, are the rest of you going on, going with Ludin or was that just Uramir? Oh, um, yes. Priyari is absolutely dragging Tredillion behind, Tredillion behind as well. Oh, to go after Ludin? Yes. Okay. Uh, Samson? If anything happens, maybe he can help. Well, I'm definitely not following the Swindle Twins. Because um, that's a fool's errand, and there's no beating those two at this point. So he's probably somewhere just standing, like, near some balcony with wind in his hair, enjoying rum with the crew, you know, that sort of thing. Probably talking to Esperis. 
you know, while Fen's talking to his dad. Same party, just different, living his life. All right. I think that is a great place for us to stop this evening. Did I find them? You don't find them at all. Oh, really? Wait, I had a whole thing planned. Yeah, I was like, I was like, let's do this. Yeah, let's, let's we just auto fail. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we love. We got. We got. We got. What? We got thirty minutes. We can find. We'll, them. I don't know how we can find them too. <laughs> I think it's it's like, best. I got Maybe this. we don't. I think it's good. No, I gotta have my. I mean, if if we don't find them, they better tell me because I played the game. That's all that matters to me. Right? No, because I want to know too. We've been. I've been trying. We uh, okay. <laughs> I'm fine with that. We uh, we we will we will begin next session with uh, the uh, the hide and seek event. You realize we'll be... you're just giving us more time to plot now, right? That's we're fine. Gonna, we're gonna figure out more ways. That's to fine. I have godlike <laughs> manifestations. What could you have, possibly do? I, I have godlike inventions. Do you know who you're talking? About? That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I got okay. I got I got one spell and I'm jacked up. So go for it, Uramir. <laughs> we're gonna make this thing work. Hey, did we did we level up? Um. Oh yes, you do level Ooh. up actually. Yeah. <laughs> you would have leveled oh, up yeah. after that fight with uh, um, oh, the um the the scorched hunter. Well, it's dope. I'll, I'll, let's roll our let's roll our hit dice before we leave. Yeah, so we'll go ahead. If we got like just um, a second. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Yo, that was this is such a great episode. Good job, everybody. The hit dice. Hit dice. I always what screw idea. up with this. How do you do this? It's like a deep. Let's do one at a, a do, do one at a time here. Um, Samson, if you want to go first. I'm rolling. D8 coming at you. Level up. Ooh, re-roll. Ooh, re-roll. Reroll ones and twos. Reroll mm -hmm. ones and twos. Five. Ooh. Five. Five hit I'll do points five. for Samson. So five plus my con and so in D and D Beyond, you don't do the con modifier. You just do the the extra, you just add whatever you roll to it. So, so what you I'm said, almost, don't do constitution modifier. We yeah, well, not when you do your max hit points. It'll do it automatically for you. Okay. Uh, Pray Arya, next. Okay. We're level 10, y'all. We've got the eight. Go. Reroll that one. I'm gonna refresh real quick because I can't see the dice. That's probably not be happening. While you guys roll, I am going to shout out all of the amazing people this evening who just I mean we had a hype train. We had so much happen this evening. Let me let me shout out all these beautiful people. Uh Slayer Gazer for the resub. They said, I'm excited to watch live tonight because I love these characters and their players who do such an amazing job. Thank you so much, Slayer Gazer, for the resub. We love you too. Um, thank you, AYT Kanaka, for the follow. Uh, thank you, Dire Bear GM, for the raid of six and the host. Thank you, Kareem Zamir, for the raid of 15 viewers. Uh, Daniel with the resub. Danielle Lenoir with the gifted sub. Uh, Friendship Magic Games for the gifted sub. Thank you so much. Hello, Love Doves for the cheer of 100 bits. Mick Bluff with the gifted five tier subs. Thank you so much. Louie the Bun for the cheer of 100 bits. Thank you for tuning back in, Louie. We are so glad to have you this evening. And thank you, Tim of Thrones, for the follow as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you enjoyed our show this evening, please consider subscribing or using that free Twitch Prime. If you love the cast, you can follow the cast members with the command FateCast. If you enjoy our show, we also have other shows on our channel. Nice roll, Christian with the eight. Uh, on Mondays, of course, we have Fate Zen, which is our homebrew Dungeons & Dragons game uh, right here. You can join us every Monday at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. On Tuesdays, we have our Breach Battle sh uh, show, which is at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we are we, That's where we play Malifaux 3E. We are currently playing through a round robin. Uh, and, of course, Malifaux 3E is a war game, kind of like Warhammer. Uh, so we are currently doing a tournament for that. Uh, and that is Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. On Wednesdays, we have Iron Valor, which is our can 
It's our show where we play through Wizards of the Coast modules. We are currently playing through Candlekeep Mysteries. You can find uh, Christian there. Brandon DMs that show. Raina is also in that show. Um, and you can uh, tune in on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for Candlekeep Mysteries. Uh, and then on Friday, we have, uh, on Friday, we have short rest where we just chill, we hang out and chat. We, there are various cast members who will participate on Friday from all of our shows. We play video games and we just literally just take a short rest from a busy week and just hang out with you guys. And that is Fridays at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. All righty. Let's see who we're going to raid this evening. Please stick Stick with us so that we can share the love in the community. Let's see. I don't think Daniel has found me anyone to raid just yet. So I no, because I got a new Eldritch invocation. I will find <laughs> so us like... someone to raid. Has so everyone I'm rolled their hit dice? Stuff, I'm going to have to roll in like D&D Beyond. I don't know what Boundary's doing. That's fine. Let's you got a one twice. That's what happened in Boundary. Yeah, and I can't see the dice, and then I have to refresh like twice before it'll show back up again, so I can at least see what I rolled in the diary or whatever. Mm. I wonder why that is. Can you not see the moon, guys? Oh no, you, you can, can see the, the moon. moon. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah worried. Uh, it's looking like y'all Luden's gonna continue to be the highest HP character. Looks what like that? it. Hey, you rolled an eight, dude. <laughs> yeah. How many hit points you got? You got a uh, four, Prayaria. Danny got a yep. five. Are you at a hundred? Uh, I have 106 now. Oh my 106. God. I'm at 91. I'm 97. Ooh, I'm at 87. I know who we will raid. <laughs> We're going to raid Fateful Encounters. They raided us the other day. We're going to raid them back. We're going to raid them back, y'all. Awesome. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. We are going to raid, so make sure when we do to send them some love, tell them Ink and Liar sent you, and just continue to spread the love in the community. We, uh, oh, is that where you, that is where I came from? Is that where you came from? Oh, boy. Wow. Huh? Well, thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs> are they still live? Let me make Hi. sure. Let me make sure they're still live here. Yeah, it uh, says they're still live. Uh, I think oh. they, they came on a raid before oh, with, and wait. then they followed us. It says they're live. Oh, well, yeah, no, they probably found us from one of their raids is what they mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I was just, I was confused there for a second. All right, all right. We are going to raid them. Thank you all so much for joining us. We love you, and we will see. Oh, look! Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wow! Join the raid train. <laughs> Ooh, join the raid Hi, train, raiders. Everyone. Thank you, dual <laughs> meaning for the raid. Going. We actually just finished our session. Let me shout you guys out in chat. Oh. <laughs> well, we just raided you. <laughs> we love and appreciate each and every one of you. Yes, we do. Okay. Definitely Stay do. with us. Thank Stay you. with us. Yes, we're gonna go raid again. We're just going to spread the love. We are so. just going to continue to spread the love, guys. We are going to raid here as well. Thank you all for joining us, and we will see you next Monday for more Fate's End. All right. Thank, and thank you. Oh, wait, let me. Thank you, Pythagoras. Pythagoras for the follow. Pythagoras? Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Pythagoras. 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 I don't think it's spelled. Twisted Pythagoras. Phantom seventy four. Uh, twisted Phantom. Un twisted Phantom seventy four. Unverted mm. underscore. Zentful for the follow. Uh, brother. Mm. Bu brother Kalob. Caleb. 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 Brother Caleb. For oh, T perfect. Oh my god! T perfect for the follow. Oh, T perfect. Yeah. See yeah. Caleb. <laughs> hey, so brother funny. Caleb. <laughs> we got dual meeting. We got dual meeting. Thank you, dual meeting. Dual brother. meeting. I'm just built yeah. different. <laughs> yeah, you are. Built better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Diff brother Caleb, for the follow. Uh, uh, oh, thank you, Cobb uh, XV. Thank you, Cobb. <laughs> We Cobb love you. XV. Thank you all <laughs> yes. so much. Tom we usually 15? we usually shout out all of our followers at the end of the stream, so that's that's why we're we're shout, making sure to shout you all out before we send you on the raid. <laughs> all right, all right. We are raiding. Thank you all so much, and we will see you next uh, Monday for more Fate's End. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.